If you want to display client-side messages, um, Apex has a number of namespaces that you can use in JavaScript, one of which is message. And I love the message namespace. It's provided this, um, it's filled a, a void that Apex has had for quite, for quite a while, which was um, how do we display messages to the end user that look the same as the messages that they would get from PL SQL? Apex.message to the rescue. Uh, you can uh, provide or you can display either success messages, error messages, or if you want a non-blocking alert. In other words, um, it will not pause or lock the JavaScript thread. It's just an alert to say, hey, here's this information, right? The other thing that you can do um, is you can adjust how exactly the messages function uh, by setting the theme hooks. And uh, this is a very common thing that I'll do is I'll set a message, uh, an automatic message timeout. And I'll show you the code to do that. In other words, I wanna detect if I have a success message. And if it's a success message, I would like for it to close in five seconds. Um, I've seen some implementations of this, uh, but I think it's best to uh, play nice uh, with, uh, try to use the tools that uh, Apex gives you to solve some of these problems. That way it kind of helps you with upgrades and things in the future. So a couple of things that we can do. Uh, none of the things that you'll see here are going back to the server uh, to make any form of communication. Um, I say that there's an item error and I'm able to, to have the error map to a particular item. The association has happened. Um, if I want a non-blocking alert, okay, I can call apex message.alert. Um, those of you familiar with writing JavaScript, alert also lets you provide a callback to let you know when the alert was closed. So when I say, okay, all I did was in my callback is I just opened up another alert and said, hey, by the way, uh, the alert was closed. I can display a success message and something subtle just happened there that I want to point out. Um, the success message closed the uh, error message. In other words, these messages are kind of designed to um, uh, play nice with one another. So when I open up, when I create an error or a success or an error or a success, you can see they make sure that they kind of don't uh, step on each other's toes. Right? One of the other things to remember about uh, creating errors is if I create multiple errors and I don't kind of clear them out, Apex will just keep stacking errors. And in the event that I just close the error message and another error happens, it didn't clear it out. It just kind of adds it to the stack again. So if I want to clear the errors, I can. Now I've kind of reset myself back to one. So what happened here? Well, quite frankly, I just have several different buttons that we'll look at. Um, if I want to show a success message, it's apex message show page success with the message, as simple as that. If I want to show an error message, I can say apex message show errors. And what's really interesting about this is it actually takes an array. So it's possible for me to show multiple errors at the same time. It just so happens that none of my examples happen to do that, or rather they don't generate multiple errors at the same time. Notice that the location of this is page. I can also have an item level error where the location is page and in line, in which case, I provide the item at which I want it to display uh, next to. Unfortunately, this doesn't support the hash label syntax that you've, you've come to uh, learn uh, from the uh, PL SQL uh, error messages. So that's just one unfortunate side effect of this. To show you what's going on in the alert, apex message alert I provide a message as well as a callback and it just so happens that my callback is to alert again terrible user experience um, but um, it just points that you can use the callback or not use the callback you don't have to and if you wish to clear errors 
Apex message dot clear errors, and then I'll go ahead and register another error immediately after that. Removed all errors. Using the, the theme hooks, uh, what you can do is uh, you can set a duration. I did five seconds. I then, as soon as my page loads, I set a timeout for five seconds to hide page success message. I use the theme hooks and the before uh, show lifecycle event that it has for me. And I say, well, if the message is a success message, I want to reset or clear out my timeout that I might have previously created. And then I want to set another timeout, which means that um, that way, if I open up multiple success messages, it pushes back and pushes back and pushes back uh, the method that will uh, hide the success. So let me show you. So here, if I say success, I'm clicking the success message multiple times. So we've definitely passed the five second mark. And then now once I stop clicking, what'll happen is it'll suppress the message. So where do we put the code that I just, I just uh, entered there? Well, quite simply, uh, all you need to do is in your page zero or your global page, I defined a dynamic action. I called it init global components. And all it does is invoke the code that I just showed you a second ago. There's other things that you can do. This is just what I've decided to do with it. 